been a week, a challenging week, but I think I've learned more lessons in the past seven days than I wanted to for a lifetime. For the last eight years, my newsletter, The Four Ps, has brought together ideas around four core themes. Something personal, something professional, something practical, something political. And I don't think these things can be separated. And I'm probably in the minority thinking they shouldn't be separated as we live our lives. This election last week gave us a decisive change in leadership, but the country remains divided, 51-49 in how it sees almost everything. And for the purposes of this, what I learned recap, I'm gonna squelch my very strong personal feelings, my massive fears for our country and our planet and our people, and just focus instead on some incredibly important professional lessons for marketers and brands and business leaders to pull from this post-mortem of the 2024 election. The first takeaway is the undeniable rise of influencers as a political force. The election showed that creators are not just add-ons in campaigns, they are front and center. Unlike traditional celebrities, they bring authenticity a kind of realness that resonates more deeply with audiences. Even if it's not accurate, it is authentic. And in marketing, this tells us that we have to value authenticity and being genuine as well. Consumers don't want to hear from faceless corporations. They trust voices, voices that feel genuine and are familiar. So here was my aha moment. The regulatory gaps in influencer endorsements are significant. While traditional political ads are heavily regulated, influencers promoting political content don't face the same transparency requirements. The line between genuine support and paid endorsement is very blurry. And I think over time, that's gonna undermine trust. It certainly impacted the election, but this gap highlights the need for marketers to champion transparency. Just like we disclose and have to disclose paid partnerships, it's crucial that audiences are aware of financial relationships, sponsorships, especially in politics. This is a call for clearer regulation. I, I also don't wanna ignore the power of social platforms still, and not in a good way. The elections cemented platforms like Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Snapchat as campaign tools. And honestly, I think it's made everything worse confusion, misinformation, it spread like a disease. And the campaign headquarters are like the Wuhan labs of this phenomenon, leveraging influencers to use their reach and spread political messages. Yes, effectively, but for brands, this signals a shift in where and how we have to invest to reach highly engaged audiences. But let's be real, we're playing with fire. I will say this plainly. The collapse of institutional authority isn't just a political phenomenon. It's happening in marketing too. Trust in creators and influencers now outweighs trust in traditional media, and this is a trend that is not going away. For marketers, this is a wake-up call. We have to recognize that attention is the currency that matters most now. In this age of digital democracy, emotional resonance often trumps facts. If brands aren't focusing on storytelling that feel honest and relevant, they risk being left out of the conversation. We learn they don't always have to be honest and relevant, or honest and accurate, but they have to be relevant. Which brings me to performance versus brand that was never the real debate. Now it's very clearly, the, the debate is narrative over metrics. This election showed us how the perception of decline overshadowed actual data. The powerful details were not actually rooted in data. That's powerful. It should remind us that emotionally resonant storytelling often beats raw performance metrics. We are now post data. That is the world we live in. People connect with a story, not with statistics. Metrics matter, but if they're all you focus on, you'll miss the human connection that's actually driving loyalty and advocacy. And finally, this election highlighted for me that community-driven influence is the new model. The days of mass messaging are waning. Success now lies in the corners, in the niches, in sparking conversations there, creating shared experiences, and building 
our own interpretation of trust. It's about engaging trusted voices, people we believe, and amplifying those people we already believe in. As marketers, we need to foster these communities and create loops of engagement and interaction. So where do we go from here? My call to action is in one of two potential paths. The paths are we can follow these people who are leading us in their own direction. Yes, they're influential, but the outcomes may not be favorable for us long term. We can fuel that machine that prioritizes attention over truth or what we should be doing is leverage our influence to champion ethical, accurate, true stories. It's our responsibility to ensure that what we amplify is not just engaging, but meaningful and honest. Let's ask ourselves the hard questions right now. Are we leading responsibly? Are we putting integrity first? In a world dominated by sound bites, we can either perpetuate shallow engagement or we can invest in campaigns that align with our values and truly serve the public good, not just our shareholders, not just the elite. This election has shown just how easy it is for attention to eclipse accuracy. Sorry, it has. And as marketing leaders, let's remember that while we hold the reins of influence, we're also responsible for the direction that we take.